Welcome Spirit Fit Warriors. I'm excited today because I'm here at the Grove Residence and what a privilege I have to be in interviewing. We have Brenda and Jerry Grove here. And as you can see her book, Beautiful Scars, A True Story. What a powerful testimony it is. And you're gonna actually enjoy this interview. And especially this month in October with domestic violence awareness that we have. Today. So Brenda and Jerry, welcome. And Brenda, why don't you start off a little bit about uh, your book here to share with the audience. Well, I am a domestic violence survivor. In December of 2006, I was attacked by an ex-boyfriend. Um, he attacked me with a box cutter and a hunting knife. basically leaving me for dead. And my mother had been trying to call me, so she sent somebody over to check on me, a family friend. And um, when he got there, my ex had already attacked me and he came out from behind a bedroom uh, door and cut him down across his face with the um, box cutter also. So so Brenda, um, so, so your ex, a little bit, like what happened with that night? or his background a little bit, because my understanding when I was reading the book is that he was an alcoholic. Yes, he. we were together for seven years, um, an on and off relationship, never married, just uh, living together. And um, he had an alcohol addiction. And when he did, he became very angry. He was um, a little mean, right. <laughs> if I must add. Right. And this book here, when I picked it up, I know that once I picked it up, I was reading from the beginning to the end. It's one of these type of books that it, once you pick it up, you can't <laughs> not put it down until you finish the book. And that's how it was when I read it. Now, there's some photographs on here. We're not going to show it because it's very graphic. So when you get the book, you, you can see it. But that night that he had the box cutter and, and the knife, and then he, he cut you, and you're laying on the ground, basically, why don't you tell us what happens next? For example, I, I understand there was another person that actually intervened mm -hmm. to help you out there. Yeah, well, um, my mother had sent um, a friend, family friend over, um, Harry, to check on me because she, um, she couldn't get me on the phone. So she sent him over to check on me. Um, so he was the one who intervened and basically saved my life. Um, because I only had about a half an hour to live and um, you know I was I needed two units of blood once I got to the hospital which equals two pints of blood yeah that's very dramatic and in your book you mentioned that did you hear a voice or or something mm -hmm. what helped you during that process when you were there thinking okay this is it you know I'm gonna die well I actually felt like uh, twice I felt like I was um, it was almost like my spirit was leaving my body um, when he before he cut me um, he knocked me unconscious and I remember saying um, that I was gonna die um, and then after he attacked me um, when Harry got there um, in the uh, minutes like after he said I'm gonna go try to get you some help um, I felt like I was going to die um, I was literally just feeling the clumps of blood in between my fingers and um, felt like I was gonna die and then I heard a voice um, it was a very soft and subtle voice saying you're not gonna die that's amazing right there mm -hmm. now let me backtrack a little bit here now now Jerry uh, you met Brenda, and your proposal you have is uh, a very romantic. So here we have a romance story as well. Why don't you share with everybody a little bit how you proposed to Brenda? Well, I always told her, when I propose to you, it'll be in a way that you'll never forget. Because mm -hmm. I don't do nothing like anybody else does. Mm -hmm. I always try to be crafty and think out of the box. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to the radio station, and I... I had a really good friend that worked there, BJ, and he talked to his boss and they let me have some airtime. And I 
proposed, I made a, a tape. And I had a set time and a set date that we was going to do it. And he even had to get permission, because it was on the John Tesh show, to use his time. Mm -hmm. And he, he said it was fine. Um, so I had took my kids and Brenda and her kids uh, all out to dinner. And the kids knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to eat dinner and, and we was going to, I was going to have it at the radio and where we was eating. Well, she says, don't you propose to me in here if that's what you're <laughs> going to do. So I knew I was running out of time. So we get to the car and the radio station was on. Mm -hmm. And she was on her phone. And she was like trying to tell me, shh. I'm trying to listen and she realized that my voice my mouth wasn't moving <laughs> and then she heard me ask her to marry her over the radio mm -hmm. and uh, while all the kids and stuff was in oh, the wow. car yeah. yeah so that that's awesome and now you know thank God that Harry was there and my understanding is Harry actually got cut and, and mm -hmm. several stitches as well now let's go uh, to the house there is that one thing that I find out interesting in your book, you mentioned how you were like in and out of consciousness, and you mentioned one thing to the nurse to take something out of your pocket. So, Brenda, why don't you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, well, in the very beginning of the attack that night, um, when my ex had showed up and his first words to me were that I was going to meet Jesus that night, um, and I, I was laying on my stomach, and it was just like, I know that God was there with me from the very beginning to the very end um, because I believe that he's the one that said take your ring off um, because if I didn't I felt like he would have seen it and he would have attacked me right away um, so I took my ring off and I put it in my pants pocket um, that I had on that that evening so um, when I got to the hospital I had to tell the nurse take my engagement ring out of my pocket before you send me back to be operated on. Mm -mm, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're in the hospital. So Jerry, what don't you mention, because this is interesting, in the book it says how, you know, at this point in time, Brenda's pretty much banged up and, and really cut up that the doctors and physicians, thank God they did an excellent job because I looked at her and, and she looks great. <laughs> so it's amazing that they did. But Jerry, Jerry, you stuck with her. Why don't you share a little bit about that? Well, we was on and off there for a little bit because she thought that she had to give this guy another chance. Mm -hmm. And when she gave this guy another chance, he just kind of went right back in the same groove he was before. And then when she realized that that's not what she wanted, mm -hmm. um, I told her I knew, I don't know how I knew, but I knew she would be back. And I told her I'd wait for her. And it was months, no contact, no phone calls, no, no nothing. And uh, I, I knew, I prayed about it for, for a long time to have a good woman. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between a woman and a lady by all means. And, and I knew what I, what I found mm -hmm. and I knew it was worth waiting. And I told her, I said, I'll, I'll wait on you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's what I did. So at what point in time were you saying that you were waiting on her? Well, I was going to give her a year. And when is this? Was this before or after the attack? This was before the attack. Okay. So before the attack and then you waited and then you proposed. And then I proposed. And now she's in the hospital mm -hmm. and now you go there and the book says, well, you know, because she's pretty much all cut up and everything, so you're a man of your word, and then you stay with her throughout the whole process. Oh, right? yes, yes. I, actually, I slept in the room. I wouldn't leave. Oh, wow. That's uh, great. I slept in the room at her door mm -hmm. to watch whoever come in and out, just so I knew she could sleep and, and knew who was doing what. Wow. So, I mean, that's great. That's a powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. This book has so much. I mean, I mean, we have... Alcoholic, the ex dealing with alcohol, probably dealing with depression as well. Mm -hmm. The book mentions how he wanted to murder Brenda and actually commit suicide. And thank, mm -hmm. thank God for Harry to come there to intervene. And now 
now we have Mark in the courtroom. So Brenda, how do you deal with that now after you went through this whole surgery to actually be able to even enter the courtroom and to face them? Well, it wasn't easy. It was pretty uh, nerve wracking um, to say the least. And um, oh, I don't even know how to explain the feelings that I had. Um, just the jitters in the stomach and you know, some people call it butterflies, but I don't know, I say butterflies is beautiful and it, it wasn't a pretty <laughs> feeling uh, because I didn't know how I was going to respond to um, seeing him. Uh, would I, I had thoughts of would I be able to look at him? Um, how would he respond to you know the I wasn't speaking in court um, I didn't speak until the modification hearing which was in 2012 um, but it was it was very nerve-wracking just to, to say the least but I really didn't want to see him but I knew I had to face him right here Jerry as a man how do you handle something like that I mean you probably was probably anger in there and you probably want to take revenge and how did you handle that oh, situation? Yes, I, I wanted to snap his neck <laughs> i so mean I, I i literally was was furious mm. um but i made brenda promise that way before that i would not touch him mm. and it was probably one of the hardest promises that i've had to keep mm. but I, I believe you got to be a man of your word. Right. And I look back now and see if I would have done something like that. Maybe she would have got more afraid because not knowing mm. who I was or how I was. Right. As in deeper inside of me. Right. Mm. So yeah, it, it took me a, it took me a long while to get over the mm. the anger of wanting to hurt him. Right. You know, mm. but I. I forgave him, but it wasn't easy, but mm -hmm. I haven't forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, we're actually mm -hmm. starting to run out of time. There's so much. I mean, we could spend here hours talking about this. So, Brenda, want to tell the audience how they can actually purchase your book. Um, well, there is several ways. It's available online. Um, it can be purchased through uh, Zulon Press, which is www.zulonpress.com. Um, you can also purchase it on my website, which is www.brendasjourneys.com. And it's also available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Let me take a look at here. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Here's the book. And definitely purchase it because there's a lot here and deals with a lot of topics and, mm -hmm. and a lot of issues. I highly recommend it. And Spirit Fruit Warriors, these are two Spirit Fruit Warriors right here, especially everything they went through. And one of the things as a Spirit Fruit Warrior is, is really to stay in the Word and to pray together. And a couple that prays together stays together. So once again, subscribe to my channel, Spirit Fruit Warriors. And if you see it on Facebook, make sure you go to the Spirit Fruit Warriors uh, YouTube channel. Okay, everybody. Uh, God bless. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you.